Module 1, Lesson 18, Finding a Rate by Dividing Two Quantities. And uh, I'll do the best I can to make some sense of this title as we go through the lesson. But kind of the idea here is that we're going to take, for example, something like five miles. And we're going to divide it by two hours, which in some ways makes sense. But in other ways, it's like, how do you take something like miles and put it into groups of hours? So it's kind of an abstract concept. It's not something you can physically do. It's not like when we take cookies and put them on separate plates. It's not like when we take a group of students and we put them in separate groups and spots. So we're dealing with an abstract con concept here, taking miles and dividing it into groups of hours. So the learning targets here, we are still very focused on this fixed relationship between two values. But of course, in the meantime, we can't really do rates without looking at ratios and equivalent ratios. So our goal today, the ICANN, I can use the structure of division and ratios to model ratios as a quantity. So we're going to take this five hours divided by, sorry, five miles divided by two hours, and we're going to try and put it into some kind of quantity that we can work with. And hopefully this will become a little bit more clear as we, we go through the lesson. Um, I keep talking about abstract. This isn't something that we can physically see really what's happening. All right, so we're going to look at two modeling exercises, and then if you were in class, there are some stations to go through. Um, I will work through each of the station problems, but it's important for your learning experience that you try to solve these without watching the video first. Go through the exploratory portion of this. All right, so at Funburger, the Burger Master, I'm guessing this is the guy running the grill, can make hamburgers at a rate of four burgers per minute. In order to address the heavy volume of customers, in other words, there's lots of people coming in, he needs to continue at this rate for 30 minutes. So he can't just go really fast and then slow down, and really fast and slow down. He needs to continue at a constant rate. He can't slow down, can't speed up, keep it steady. If he continues to make hamburgers at this pace, how many hamburgers will the burger master make in 30 minutes? Now, hopefully, you're hearing rates and ratios in this problem. Hopefully, you're hearing, hey, I've got a rate of four burgers per minute. And in your mind, you're probably thinking, hey, there's our ratio of four to one. So we have a rate of four, um, things we've worked on in the last few lessons. And in your mind, you're probably thinking, hey, I can scale this up. So here's my burgers and here's my minutes. And I can scale this up to 30 minutes, scale this up to 30 minutes. And I can figure out that he's going to make 120 hamburgers, which is great. This is the foundational thinking that we want for you. But today we're going to look at this in a little bit different way. So what we're going to do here is we're going to take this rate and we are going to write the rate and we're going sorry we're going to write the unit rate this 4 to 1 and we are going to connect it with its rate unit burgers and minutes so far this should look pretty comfortable here and what we're going to say is we want to scale this up to 30 minutes. And I'm going to put it as 30 over 1. And we want to have minutes. So I have taken this rate right here of 4 burgers per minute. And I have said I want to increase this to 30 minutes. So I've got my rate here. 
and I have said right here that I want to continue this for 30 minutes. So if I multiply, I'm going to get four burgers times minutes. And that's going to be divided by minutes. I said four. Boy, let me fix that. Four times 30 burger minutes. So I've multiplied the four times the 30, and I've multiplied the burgers times the minutes. And I'm not sure how you get burgers minutes. Doesn't make sense, does it? Give it a second here. And so on the denominator, we've got one minute. So if we multiply this out here, we'll get 120. And we'll have burgers minutes with the denominator of minute. Now, if I look here, in my numerator, I've got minutes. And in my denominator, I've got minutes. And these are going to divide each other out. So all I will be left with is 120 burgers. So instead of creating a table of equivalent ratios and scaling up that way, I'm actually setting up my rate. And I'm saying I am going to continue this for a certain amount of time. And I'm using a multiplication problem to answer the question. So I'm going to get rid of all my pin marks here and try and show this again. So I've got a 4 to 1 ratio, a rate of 4. And the rate goes with burgers and minutes. And I want to continue that for 30 minutes. And I put that over a denominator of 1 because it helps me line everything up. And these minutes are going to divide each other out, which is going to leave me with 4 times 30 burgers, which is 120 burgers. So here we are taking our concept of scaling, and we are starting to include our units as part of this process. And I said it once before, we're taking a rate, and we are going to extend it, in this case, over time. So we're going to scale it up from 1 minute to 30 minutes. But instead of a table of equivalent ratios, we're setting it up as a multiplication expression. This is very powerful, especially when we start looking at some measurement concepts a little bit later in this module. All right, let's take a look at the second modeling exercise. So Chandra is an editor at the New York Gazette. Her job is to read each article before it is printed in the newspaper. If Chandra can read 10 words per second, how many words can she read in 60 seconds? So once again, I have a rate, 10, and I'm going to express it as per 1. And I have the words. And I have the seconds. And I am going to extend this. I am going to keep doing it for 60 seconds. So I am going to scale up by multiplying. The seconds are going to divide each other away. And I'm going to find that I have 600 words in 60 seconds. So once again, and I keep kind of doing this over and over again. Here is my unit rate, here is my rate unit, and then right here I have an extension. I'm going to keep doing this for 60 seconds, and I'm setting this up as a multiplication expression. All right, so at this point in the classroom, uh, you would be turned loose to work on some different stations. I think there's six of them. So on this next slide, I've got a timer, and I'm going to skip that.
and oh, come back here. Oh, there we go. And I'm going to work through the station exercises, uh, setting them up so you can see how they work. And the process is going to be the same. I am going to analyze the problem to determine the rate. And then I am going to see if they are continuing the rate, if it's ongoing, and how it's being scaled up. All right, so I've got Helena. Helena works for a publishing firm. She's considered an average typist and can type 52 words per minute. My brain just screamed at me, great. If she continues at this rate, how many words would Helena type in four minutes? All right, so I see I've got a rate, and I see that I'm extending it. So I've got 52 over 1, so there is my unit rate. I've got words and minutes, so I have my rate unit. And I am going to scale this up, saying one minute's not enough. I want 4 over 1 minutes. So the minutes are going to cancel, and I am going to find that I have 52 times 4, and 50 times 4 is 200, and 2 times 4 is 8. I will have 208 words in 4 minutes. And I would expect that you'd actually write a nice complete sentence answer, but I do try to keep these videos a little bit shorter. So once again, unit rate, rate unit, extended over a period of time. All right, here we go. So if Lena can types at a constant rate of 52 words per minute, she can type 208 words in four minutes. All right, exercise two. Jackson test drives cars for a car company. Part of his job is to test the cruise control on a testing course. Now, cruise control is a button you push in the car, and it keeps the car at a steady speed. It doesn't speed up. It doesn't slow down. On his last test drive, Jackson set the cruise control at 48 miles per hour. My brain just screamed at me, great, and drove for two hours. So I have a 48 to 1 unit rate, and I've got miles, and I've got hours, and I am going to extend this up to two hours. I'm going to scale it up and say, hey, how would it look with two hours? And so the hours are going to cancel each other, and I've got 48 times 2, which will give me 96 miles in 2 hours. If Jax drives at a constant rate, 48 miles per hour, he can drive 96 miles in 2 hours. Yay. All right. Station 3. To train for an upcoming marathon, Alvin runs 9 miles a day. Now, my brain just screamed at me that this is a rate. I have a unit rate of 9 over 1, and I've got miles, and I've got days. And it says we're going to take this 9 miles and we're going to scale it up to 30 days. And scaling up is a multiplication operation. And so the days are going to divide each other out, and so I will have 9 miles times 30, which will give me 270 miles. Go, well, Alvin. Exercise, exercise. All right, if Alvin runs 9 miles for every day for 30 days, he would run a total of 270 miles. All right, station four. The library just hired Brittany to write reviews on different books. The job requires Brittany to read three books per week. My brain just screamed, hey, there's a rate. So I've got three over one, and I've got books, and I've got week. I've got unit rate, rate unit, all together. My rate is there. And it says that Brittany's going to continue this for 12 weeks. So we're going to scale up to 12 weeks. And the weeks are going to cancel each other, and I'm going to find out that she's going to read 36 books in 12 weeks. And that's what it's going to tell us. All right, station five. Notebooks are on sale for four notebooks per dollar. 
Now, the first four stations that we've looked at have all involved continuing something over time. This one does not involve time. This one involves money. So I've got a rate of four notebooks per dollar. So four over one, and I've got notebooks. per dollar, but we're going to scale this up to $12. So I want to take this situation, I want to say instead of spending $1, I'd like to scale up to $12. And my dollars are going to cancel each other out, and I'm going to find out that there are 48 notebooks that can be purchased for $12. All right, station six. Kevin hopes to earn a bas college basketball scholarship to improve his shooting skills. Kevin shoots 50 baskets per day. My brain just screamed at me, hey, here's a rate. 50 to one, baskets, and day. And it says he's going to shoot 50 baskets every day for 60 days. So I hear that this is another time one. This is going to continue over a period of time. And days are going to cancel, and I'm going to find out that he's got 3,000 baskets. Well, I guess it's 3,000 shots. I would hope that he makes them all, but there's also the, the real life here. So he's going to take 3,000 shots over 60 days. All right, so quick look here. Um, so the idea is that we can, con well, we can convert measurement units using rates. And right now we've been doing measurement of like distance over time, or we've been doing notebooks to dollars. But we can also do this with other measuring units. So here we've got five gallons per minute. So gallons is a measure of capacity, minutes is a measure of time, and we're looking and saying if this continued over 10 minutes, how many gallons? So we've set it up exactly like what we had before. We have this rate here. We've got the unit rate of 5, we've got the rate unit of gallons per minute, and we're saying we will continue it over 10 minutes. We'll cancel out the minutes and we'll find out that over 10 minutes it would be 50 gallons. For example, maybe the faucet's leaking at a rate of 5 gallons per minute. If this continues for 10 minutes, how many gallons would be leaked? So we can use rates for conversions. We looked at specific problems dealing with time and money today, but later on we will be looking and saying how can we use this to change things from inches to feet or centimeters to kilometers. The same structure comes into place. These are rates. So hopefully, as we wind up the lesson here, you are seeing how we can use the structure of division and ratios to model ratios as a quantity. So we can take these ratios, turn them into rates, and use these rates to measure. All right, so we've looked at the fixed relationship here using the unit rate, and then we have scaled up. And of course, as part of this, we were looking at ratios and equivalent ratios. So that concludes Module 1, Lesson 18. It's kind of a fun one. I enjoy it. Um, a different way to look at some of the things that we've been working on. If you've got questions, make sure you talk to your teacher. Make sure you complete your problem set.